Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson six, theories of motivation, part number two. Big surprise from the last um, video, probably. So here we go. We have incentive theory, which is key point one. And incentive theory reminds me a lot of drive reduction theory, but kind of is the opposite of it. So I remind you of it first. The drive reduction theory of motivation emphasizes internal states of the organism. Uh, essentially, you have a need and you have a drive to reduce that need, so you do that behavior. However, incentive theory stresses the role of the environment in motivating the behavior. So an incentive is the object that we seek to, uh, that we seek or the result um, that we are trying to achieve through a motivated behavior. So um, in drive reduction theory, hunger is the drive that we're trying to reduce but incentive theory, uh, the food is the incentive. It's the thing that we're trying to get through through our behavior. Uh, so it's, I think, two sides of the same coin, uh, but a different way to describe it. So incentives are also known as reinforcers. Um, they might be goals and rewards. Uh, drivers push us to reduce needs. So incentives pull us to obtain them, drives push us to reduce those things. So I think, again, two sides of the same coin. Um, the example here, hunger may cause us to walk to the cafeteria, but the incentive for our action is the sandwich. Um, what you do for your behavior depends on the reward at the end. You walk to the cafeteria for a sandwich, to your locker, for, to your lunch kit for your soup, uh, maybe to your friend for a granola bar, granola bar it wasn't the hunger that made you do that it was the incentive that made you do or choose that action so sometimes our drive or hunger is so strong that we don't care what the incentive is like the sandwich might be a weak incentive uh, but sometimes our hunger is not so strong that we can choose and in that case the incentive uh, is the real driver here so for example if we're really hungry we'll eat a sandwich from the cafeteria even though we know that the cafeteria sandwiches are bad um, but if our drive for hunger is weak, our incentive must be strong. We must think that, oh, I really want that sandwich uh, if you don't have a lot of drive. So incentive uh, is the environment. It's the thing that we want that is uh, making us act on it and making us perform that behavior. Well, uh, the other theory um, is the drive that is causing us to do something. So uh, in incentive theory, you might be slightly hungry. Um, and you really like peanut butter sandwiches, so you'll eat one if you're only slightly hungry. Uh, but you'll eat any type of sandwich if you're very hungry. People are motivated to obtain positive incentives and to avoid the negative incentives. Uh, food draws you towards the refrigerator. Just because you're hungry uh, doesn't mean that uh, you know, you're gonna go hunt for things or go to the store or go to a restaurant. Um, it's the incentive of the food in the fridge maybe without the cost, that brings you to the refrigerator. So um, similar to drive reduction, but I think different. Cognitive theory uh, is about um, the reasons in your brain about why you do something. So cognitive psychologists seek to explain the motivation by looking at forces inside and outside of us that energize us to perform a behavior. Uh, they break it up into two different types, extrinsic motivation, uh, refers to uh, biological needs, incentives, or external rewards. So these things that we've been talking about so far, uh, drives or incentives. And then intrinsic motivation refers to engaging in activities because they're personally rewarding. Um, they fulfill something inside of you. There's no external uh, reward for you. There's only internal reward, maybe in how you feel or uh, what you learn. And what you can do afterwards. Uh, let's see, sorry. For example, if you spend hours and hours playing basketball because you wish to excel at the sport, you're following intrin intrinsic motivation. Um, but if you spend hours playing basketball because your parents want you to excel at the sport, that's an external thing and that's extrinsic motivation. If you play basketball for the fun of it, again, intrin intrinsic motivation. Uh, there are different uh, reasons why someone may engage in an activity. And if they're external, that's extrinsic motivation. 
If it's internal uh, reasons, then that, that's intrinsic motivation. Uh, we have a theory about these extrinsic uh, motivations. So over justification theory says that um, when people are given more extrinsic motivation than necessary to perform a task, their intrinsic motivation declines. So uh, if you know, you're always being rewarded for doing something, um, the motivation for you to do it on your own isn't really there. For example, if you enjoy reading books, I love reading books, I read books because that makes me happy. That's intrinsic motivation. According to this over justification effect, if someone started to pay you to read books or started to count read books and it counted towards a score, um, you would enjoy reading that book less because someone is giving you something to do it. It's not just for your own pleasure. It's not for you anymore. It's for something else. Uh, you might ask yourself, why am I doing this? And answer, it's not because I'm enjoying it, it's because I'm getting paid to do it. Um, if you're getting paid to do it, like, and not because you enjoy it, you'll start to enjoy it less. Uh, if you're all of a sudden stop being paid or paid less, then you're gonna stop reading, even though you would have read before, even if someone wasn't paying you to do it. Uh, kind of a bad thing about turning a hobby into something that makes you money. All of a sudden, that hobby is not a hobby anymore. You don't do it because you like it, you do it because you get paid to do it. If you stop getting paid, you'll probably stop that hobby, and that's unfortunate. Uh, if you're no longer paid to read books, you might lose interest in the task completely. And again, very unfortunate. If you love working on cars, so then you get uh, you start to work in a auto body shop, uh, but then you get paid to work on cars, so you don't love working on cars anymore. Once you stop working at the auto body shop, you're not likely to do it as a hobby. So keeping those things separate is often very important. We have your job, important terms as always, and then motivational quotes for you to look up. I think this one's kind of interesting. If you have any questions at all for me, I am here, so please let me know. But thanks so much for watching, everyone. I will see you soon.